All right, guys, I am sorry I am late. I, um, I can't tell you the amount of traffic I just fought through to get here, but um, I'm here. Let me adjust this here. Debbie, you're not missing anything. Nobody's missing anything. I was, um, I was late. So anyway, um, here I am. I want to make sure to apologize. I was driving. I was, anyway, I was in Malibu. I had to drive down here to um, the Palisades, and the, the traffic was completely insane. So I am here. We're ready to go. Donald, hi, nice to see you. Debbie, Donald, Donald, Dexta, all of you guys are here. Um, today, I want to talk about something really, really important. And it's something that's not politically correct, as uh, my next podcast won't be either. Um, you know, those of you guys who know me know that my main goal is always going to be to um, speak on behalf of the animals, speak on behalf of dogs. Number one concern, no matter what I'm going to ever talk about, I'm going to stick up for dog owners, I'm going to do all this stuff. But what I really want to talk about is what's best for the dogs. Because all things considered, I can communicate with you, I can communicate with you know, other people, but I can't have I can't know that you're communicating with with dogs. So, um, Alan, I'm here. I got your text. I said um, I'm supposed to go live. I was um, fighting traffic. And by the way, Janet's not in here. Janet is an agility trial with the Dwayne Mater. So I'm on my own here. I hope that uh, you guys will really understand uh, that that I'm I'm going to be a little bit overwhelmed here. I'm used to used to having Janet kind of chime in and 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 doing a lot of the. Uh, the moderating, which I'm not going to be able to do. So I'm going to really talk more about the, the positive only training lie because I've talked about it before. Those of you who know my background know that my I, I cut my teeth, which is what we say in America. I don't know. I don't know how you say it in other countries for those of you tuning in from other countries. But cutting your teeth means you paid your dues um, working with shelter dogs. Yes, I've competed in, you know, competitive obedience, uh, protection sports, you know, Schutzen, uh, Mondio, obedience sports, AKC and such. But my, 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 my main focus has always been to make the world, world a better place for dogs. And I did that uh, through my work with Bound Angel. I talked about that in the last podcast, and um, I hope that you... Uh, watch that podcast. It's not the last, I, I, the podcast get a little screwed up, by the way, because I, I put them up and then in the, on Apple and Google and, and, and TuneIn, I think it's on TuneIn, they're always in order. They always go one through, I think we're up to 55 now. But sometimes here on YouTube, they don't go in order. So the, the, you'll get them out of order. But I talked about founding Bound Angels and, and the work I've done with rescue dogs and shelter dogs and animal shelters throughout the country and, and the importance of that work and how, how I really am impassioned to help, you know, save more shelter dogs. Um, I, by the way, just for those of you, I always get one or two straggling comments about the picture behind me. People say, do you have a picture of a dead zebra behind you? Because if I do this with my head, it looks like a dead zebra. But if I do this, you'll see that it's a picture of a lion who killed the zebra, and he's standing there before he ate it. I took that picture in Kenya a couple of years ago, and um, it's part of my photography stuff that I did. But anyway, um, I hope you guys are getting, is the live feed working now? Okay, yeah, Laura, you say it's working. Okay. So, um, you got people in from all over the world. You know, you got Canada, you got uh, USA. I saw uh, Laura. I know you're from England, and thanks for tuning in. I know it's late there, so um, uh, here's where I, I kind of came onto this this topic. I'm not going to mention any names, but you know, I, I I don't look at other social media stuff much. I'm not a big social media person. I post my stuff, and then I kind of look at people that I follow and look to garner some information or to, you know, to, to get some news, something I can share with you. I'm not the guy who goes on somebody else's page and, um, and criticizes things, right? I mean, in other words, if you post something and you're, you know, a staunch vegan, I'm not going to go under your post and tell you that you're wrong because that's your opinion. You have a right to your opinion. And even if I don't agree with it, as long as it's not really hurting anybody innocent, then um, I, I'm not going to say anything about it. Right? Other people don't do that, by the way. If you look at my page, you'll see people always come 
over, you know, on my page and start commenting on things, you know, like, well, you're wrong. I mean, the, the, the T-shirt I did with uh, Goofy and, and the American flag, the Blue Lives flag, um, I've caught so much grief over that. But, you know, I don't care. Like, I didn't make the shirt so that everybody would like it. I made it so because a certain amount of people would like it. But most importantly, I made it because it stands for something I believe in. And if you're on my page, then I kind of think that you're going to follow what I believe. Now, if we disagree on some things, it's not a big deal. Right? Society has come to this place. And by the way, this is coming full swing, so just bear with me. Society has come to such a place that when we disagree on things, we're automatically enemies. But that's not true. Right? That should not be true is what I really should say. So, you know, people in the United States are so politically divided that if, you know, you're on the right and your friend is on the left and you disagree on one thing, it ends the friendships, ended marriages, family, relationships and all this stuff. Uh, completely, completely insane. Right? It's just, it's, it just befuddles me that people have such fickle friendships and such fickle ideas of what a friendship really is, that they're willing to give that up because you have a difference of opinion. So like me and my friends, you know, my friend Carlos and I, one of my best friends in the world, are, have a different opinion on political things. But we discuss it. We have great challenge conversations and stuff like that. Um, and we don't lose our friendship over it. However, um, God, Dogs and Guns is coming back, Donald, I promise. Um, it's coming back. I just took it off because I was redoing all the shirts. I put, you know, the, the ones with Goofy, the Karate Dog, those logos are now on the front. Uh, we've got the Belgian Malinois with the, with the American flag. That's really super cool shirt. Take a look at those if you haven't seen those. I don't know how to bring those in here. There's a way to bring them in, but I'm using a different software. So um, anyway, um, yeah, okay. I'm going to talk about that because you just said that here in Germany and France, we're invaded by 100% positive training fast. You can't even say no to a dog without these with these people anymore, it causes problem. That's what we're gonna really, really talk about, right? Um, I leave the videos on when I go on hoping, <laughs> that's very funny. Um, so when people get to this point where they disagree, and, and here, the topic of today's conversation, I, and I really wish there were some people in here who would challenge me on this, because the idea of positive only training is rooted in a noble, kind, compassionate um, idea, right? The idea to never have to do harm to a dog is what we all want. In other words, my idea, even though I'm a balance trainer, is not to do harm to the dogs, but to give the dogs what they need. So the idea of positive only, and I saw a video the other day of a guy, I'm gonna leave it at that, it's a guy, and he, was, he had a dog doing uh, I don't know what it was. It was getting into like a, a, a heel position, right? And he claimed he'd never put a prong collar on the dog, which I, I mean, I've taught hundreds of dogs to get into heel position without a prong collar. But he was doing it through what we call operant conditioning, which operant conditioning, in, you know, and somebody else can chime in more on this stuff here. Operant conditioning deals with the idea that the dog makes a choice to do something and... And, um, and then you mark that and reward it. So if you're out in an open field and your dog is off leash and you're expecting your dog to do something like get into a heel position and you're gonna click and mark that, then that's a hard pill to swallow because what happens is people think, you know, what's gonna encourage the dog? In other words, if the dog has never been lured or shaped to know that behavior, how are they gonna do that? So when I'm criticizing positive only training, I'm not criticizing positive training. I'm criticizing positive only training. But more important than that, I'm criticizing the lie that so many people tell in saying that dogs don't require corrections. Now, some dogs don't require corrections, right? Some dogs will just get it. And when I say correction in this sense, I'm gonna mean a, an aversive, right? Thank you for the super chats. I'm not really paying much attention because usually Janet's here doing this. I'm going to kind of blabble on and then I'm going to look over and I'm going to come back to, um, come back to this. So um, the, the, the positive only idea starts with the presupposition that the dog is going to be psychic. He's going to know what I want and I'm going to click and reward that, right? And the way the whole opera thing starts is we click and treat and click and treat for the dog looking at us and the dog sits and the dog downs and the dog comes. 
it's a really great thing. In other words, wh when I get a puppy, and sometime in the future I'll be getting a puppy, um, I'll do a video series on operant conditioning for something like scent detection, which is it's a great, great, great way to use it for that. Hey, Anthony, good to see you, buddy. Um, lucky, I just look over. How coincidental is that? Anthony clicks in, leading the pet canine, great trainer in New York, if you guys ever need help. Um, and I just, I noticed him. Rare it happens. But um, so the idea that compulsive-based training kind of forces a dog to do something, operant-based conditioning assumes they're just going to do it and we're going to mark it. And positive training means we can lure the dog into these positions, gives us a really nice triangle of training, right? So we've got the compulsion base, we're going to force the dog. We're going to yank on, up on the choke chain until the dog sits. We're going to praise the dog when he does it and release it. Then you've got the operant idea where we're going to wait for the dog to sit. We're going to click and we're going to reward. And then we've got the positive or balanced approach. And what we're going to do is lure the dog into the position. Those are really the, the, the triangle of dog training. And if you really want to balance it out, the positive is going to be obviously the best way for you to do it. But you must lure the dog into it. Right? You can't expect the dog to know something he doesn't know. That's important, right? You, could, you know what you know, you, don't, you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know. Think about that for a minute. Think about that. That's really deep. Maybe that should be on a shirt. You don't know what you don't know. Neither does another animal. Neither, do, neither does a dog. So he doesn't know what you want. He doesn't know what he should be doing. Those are two negatives, right? If he knows how to sit and you're standing there waiting for him, at some point he may sit. He may run over, pee on the fence first, he may chew some grass, he may chase a, you know, a, 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 a squirrel, and then come back to you and sit. Taking away the ability to correct a dog does a huge, huge damage to dog training. Taking that away, taking away the ability to um, Give a dog a correction, whether that correction is withholding the treat, which I think is a very weak correction, but um, giving the dog a leash pop, telling the dog no, um, giving the dog some physical uh, information, some physical manipulation to get the dog to do something. There's plenty of dogs that they know how to sit, they get up and drive, and I've got to push down on their butt to get them to sit. That's not aversive, right? But it's not positive only. And when and I'm going to do a podcast about this whole other idea on, on, a, on a freedom of speech issue, which I mean, I'm just going to touch on here and I'll go on, on to it in another podcast. Um, remember that when freedom of speech is limited, right? We in America, and I know some people, some of you guys are from other countries. What makes America great, and believe me, I lived in Germany, I, I lived in Switzerland, I lived in other countries, I know other countries. What makes America great is the idea that you can have an idea and you can run with that idea, right? Nobody's gonna tell you you're not allowed to have that idea. Freedom of speech gives us the ability to say what we wanna say. As long as you don't yell, you know, fire in a crowded theater or a death to, you know, people with red hair or some crazy, crazy thing. In this country, you have the freedom to say what you wanna say. So therefore, if I want to post something on my page, whatever it is, right? No one has the right to limit that speech. Now, Facebook and YouTube and Google and all these, uh, you know, I mean, face, social media platforms, Google is not, but YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, they're platforms. That means they, they, they should allow speech from all different sides. And I'm going, I'm, this is coming full circle too. They must allow that speech, right? Because... It may not agree with them, and it may not agree with a majority of the people who are on that platform, but it will agree with someone. It will resonate with someone, and the information should be there for that. And the reason, here, come, here it comes full circle, is recently, a, a few years ago, in Europe, and those of you who are from Europe, please chime in. I'm not reading the comments, by the way. I'm just talking right now. That in Europe recently, certain liberties have been taken away, and I'm only going to talk about dog training. I'm only going to talk about dog training. But in these countries, you can't use a prong collar. You can't use an e-collar. Heck, you can't even use a choke chain in a lot of these countries anymore. 
So my concern when someone limits my speech on my page on Facebook, Instagram, in, Twitter, I don't do Twitter, by the way, but any of these, my concern and what angers me is if you limit my speech in one thing, then you're going to limit it in something else. And when that comes down to people saying um, that I'm not allowed to say something, Right? Whether it's political, whether it's um, personal, whether it's dog training, whether it's auto mechanics, no matter what it is, if a social media platform is going to limit that. So let's say, for example, okay, they, they, they took, if, you, if you're on my um, uh, Facebook, you'll see that um, I posted a thing about the national anthem. I'm very patriotic. You can look behind me and you see there, right there. There's the flag that was my dad's coffin. I love the American flag, right? My dad was born in Portugal. I was born in the States. My mother was born in Germany. I'm a family of immigrants, first generation American. I love my flag. I love, love, love the American flag. Now, I posted this thing and Facebook blocked it and said inaccurate information. Now, it's inaccurate information based on something that their fact checker checkers checked. Right? Their fact checkers checked something to say that what I said was not accurate. I don't care, right? I don't know that my information was accurate. It was a beautiful story. It actually conveyed my feelings about this, this topic, but they blocked it. So now my concern is I'm going to put on something here. I'm going to talk about prong collars, that prong collars are a fair and humane way to correct a dog. And they're gonna block this video and say, well, that's false information. Our fact checkers checked it out and you're not allowed to do this. And it's gonna, it's gonna misconstrue information that needs to be out there. Now, if you don't wanna use a prong collar on your dog, I think that's fine. I have no problem with that. If you don't wanna use an e-collar on your dog, I have no problem with that. Janet won't use an e-collar on Dwayne, right? And I respect it. I said, if you ever want to, and if you ever want to change your mind, I will help you. But I honor the fact that she has made that decision. But don't anyone, government, social media platforms, or anything, take away the liberty of me to be able to say what I believe. That's important, right? I mean, I get it. Hate speech, all these things, you know, like, like uh, you know, people who want to make bombs. I mean, I get that. But opinions, political opinions, personal opinions, social opinions, anything like that, I don't want to kowtow to it. Right? If you don't agree with something, then just move on. And that goes to, to the crux of what I'm trying to say here. If you don't agree with negative tra uh, negative training, aversive training, then don't go to a page that has aversive training on it. If you don't agree with something that I say, then don't put something, don't post, you know, don't, don't counter what I say. This is my platform. And it's usually not an intelligent conversation either, by, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, so that's Dexta. You, you, you hit the nail on the head. So that is why um, the executive order states that, and this is not, by the way, this is not something that's prone to a Republican or Democratic president, but they, a, a social media platform should not be fact-checking things. This is not a factual place. This is a place of different opinions. My truth might not be your truth, but the truth is always the truth. Remember that. My truth might not be your truth, but the truth is always the truth. So, um, so positive only training goes up along this presupposition that, you know, this person, this, this obviously is going to be a magician, he's going to be a dog trainer, and he is going to be able to train your dog without ever correcting the dog. And to some crazy, radical, radical, radical degrees, these people will believe that nothing negative should ever happen in training. And I couldn't disagree more. Negative information is very, very, very powerful information. Negative information is almost more important than positive information. Because reinforcing something positively 
several times in a dog training environment is not as powerful as the negative experience that will lead the dog to the positive. I'm not saying abusive, right? But that's what people are going to go to. People are going to go to this place and say, well, he's, he's talking about abusive training. And I'm not. I'm not. But the fact that somebody's mind can be so twisted and so sick, right, so convoluted, that they can extrapolate out of what I just said that I think dogs should be abused shows the dysfunction in their mind, right? In other words, if you're not for something, it doesn't mean you're for something that's against it. It means you're not for that. I'll tell you my pros, one of my problems with positive-only training. It does a disservice to dogs, right? And I'll tell you why it does a disservice to dogs. Okay, what is... Um, yeah, Anthony, you made a great point there. I keep looking over at Anthony when you're writing. I don't know why. Um, people automatically believe, I forgot where I was going. I'm kind of like now on Anthony's thing. People automatically believe that the dog must be hurt in order to receive a negative. And that's not true, right? A dog can receive a correction. A dog is a tough animal. We're tough animals. We're a lot tougher than, I'm sorry if you guys have kids, a lot tougher than you guys are raising kids these days, right? You need to remain focused on negative experiences. Neg How many times after you've gotten in one car accident, you get another car accident? You don't because you pay more attention. You know, you only need to smash your knee on the corner of the table once, maybe twice. You don't do it every day. But if every day you walk by that table, somebody gives you a cookie and says, good job, good job, good job. It's not as powerful to you as smashing your knee on the table one time, and then you're never going to do it again. Right? So with dogs, dogs need that negative feedback. And the negative feedback can come with a leash pop. It can come with a, uh, it can come with a blocked behavior. It can, come at the, it can come with an e call It can come with a long line correction. It can come with a tap from our hand or foot or anything like that. So um, I remember I watched one of the episodes of, of Caesar and, and he, was, he tapped the dog with his foot. And oh my God, the, 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 the radical people went so insane, right? And they said, he's kicking the dog, he's doing this, he's doing that. And he wasn't kicking. He tapped the dog with his foot as he would have tapped it with his hand. It, it was the same thing. But, and it moves, it tends to move people, like I've seen dog trainers, go into this skewed other direction. So they, they kind of get criticized a little bit by the, by the social media, social justice warriors, that they disagree with this, or they find it offensive, or they find it this and find it that. And then the next thing you know, um, the person is like so radically the other way. It's like somebody who is, and I'm just using this as an example, please don't, don't hold my feet to the fire on this. You know, people who are shamed for eating meat and then they become vegans and they're radical, radical vegans, or they're, they were never believed in, in God and suddenly they you know, have an epiphany and they believe in God and now everybody else has got to believe in God. The people who are really radical about things are usually those who were recently converted. That's really important to see, right? If you kind of have a belief and you see it works and it works for you, then it just works for you. That, that work is just there. So dogs need that negative information. They need a leash pop. They need, you know, the door to slam in their face. They, you know, on crate training, when dogs try to dart out, I smack the door right in their nose. Sounds negative, but if I open a door on my car and the dog goes sailing out and runs in the street and gets hit by a car, something different. The, all these positive only trainers that you read in the books, right, all the books, aren't able to proof their training when it comes to prey drive. That's a critical, critical, critical element. I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to get into a back and forth thing, but I'll tell you, if somebody says to you, have your dog stay and give him a cookie. Have your dog stay and give him a cookie. And if he gets up, wait till he gets back to that place and give him another cookie. That means he'll stay there as long as there's cookies, one. But two, more importantly, when his predatory drive, when that prey drive kicks in, all bets are off. All bets are off. When a dog's natural predatory drive kicks in, it's going to outweigh the cookie. The only thing it's not going to outweigh is the dog's desire to avoid the conflict of correction, pain, aversion, whatever you want to call it. That's it. 
So when a dog knows, for example, I put a dog on a prong collar, I tell the dog, stay. He gets up and runs, boom, he gets a, a correction at the end of the prong collar. I say, no, pop, put him back. His thought now becomes, I can go chase the squirrel, but I, one, don't get the squirrel, two, receive a correction, sorry about that, receive a correction when I do the wrong, and three, receive a praise or a reward when I do it right. That, that right there is balanced training in a nutshell. In a nutshell, balanced training helps dogs to figure out what I want them to do by luring and shaping, right? But very positive, luring and shaping. I'm going to put the dog into the position because positions are something that a dog needs to be helped to find. He can't naturally find a perfect heel. He can't naturally find a... Um, you know, a, a perfect front. He's got to be coaxed into that. The, and the reason I'm so uh, in, uh, stressful on this is because two things. One, dogs only live to be 10 to 15 years old. If you're going to spend the first two or three years trying to help the dog learn these basics, then you're going to spend two more years and a five to six years old, the dog's ready to retire. The dog never enjoys um, knowing those things, right? If you're going to get in shape, Get in shape, work hard, eat right, go to the gym, do the right things, and you're going to enjoy your health more than if you say, well, I'm just not going to eat sweets on Tuesday. That's ridiculous, right? Just don't eat sweets all week, hunker down, get in shape, and feel good. Same thing with your dog. Give him the information you want him to have. Lure him into those positions. Correct him and block him from making those mistakes and reward him abundantly for doing the right thing. And that's one of the pieces that you guys are always asking about. The biggest mistake people make is cutting rewards out too soon, right? If you're going to use rewards like treats or toys or whatever, and you cut them out too soon, the dog's going to figure that out. And then when he does, he'll stop doing the behaviors, at which point you will reintroduce the rewards. And when you reintroduce those rewards, the dog figured something out. And this is paramount. This is critical. The dog figured out that I don't do it when there's no reward, the reward comes back. Now you've got a dog that's impossible to fix because he's just become reward wise or collar wise. Like if a dog has an e collar on, you're giving a dog information, information, information. Then you take the e collar off and the dog doesn't do it properly and you can't give the dog the information, the correction. Now you've got a dog that realizes, oh, when the collar's on, I listen, collar's off, I don't listen. You must ride through the entire cycle of training with your rewards, with your corrections, with your collar or whatever you're using, right? Without that, you end up making the mistake of conditioning the dog to figuring out when the lure, the uh, reward or the correction is present. So, Let's go through this one more time because I'm, I'm kind of, we're 40 minutes into this, actually 40 minutes into three o'clock when I was supposed to start, only 30 minutes in. Um, and then I'll, I'll take some questions. Um, the, 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 the main issue here is positive only training is a lie. It's a blatant, outright lie. That's what the thumbnail says. That's what this podcast is about. This live cast is about is that if you believe that a dog will need no corrections throughout his training, you're, you're crazy, right? And fact check that. You can fact check it all you want. And if you go to certain sites, you'll, you'll believe it. If you, if you ever trained a dog, then you'll know that it's not true. They, I've never, ever, ever, ever seen a dog that was trained successfully, I'll say, with positive-only training. It doesn't work. Right? Jan is one of the most positive trainers I know. She'll, give, she'll grab Dwayne by the scruff of his neck and put him back in his place. And it's the best thing she does. It's the very best thing she does because Dwayne is a high drive, hard headed dog. She didn't do that. He would be nowhere. She just put another agility title on Dwayne. Um, she does a lot of hard work, but she understands that, you know, and she said to me when we first got together, she said, well, you know, I thought clicker training just meant you use corrections and the clicker. Well, in proper clicker training, that would be right, right? It would just be, the clicker would just be a mark and it's a gimmick. I, I, I've done, I, I, there's a video or two on my member section where I show you how to use the clicker. Um, 
I just don't know why. I mean, I can use my voice and do just as good, but I'll, I'll do a series when I get the puppy, you know, new puppy here um, using the clicker if you guys want to use it. It's, I, it's a great tool. But um, yeah, and Zandra, Chandra, I don't know what that, how, do you, how you say your name. Uh, negative only training isn't good either. In fact, I already said that. You're, you're kind of exactly saying um, negative only training. Negative only training is as bad as positive only training, probably worse, right? Because you're just setting the dog. In other words, when you build a dog, when you use positive only training, you're building a real stubbornness into the, into the behavior of the dog because the dog is not ever getting corrected. If you do negative only training, and I'm not saying compulsion. Compulsion training, I'm going to talk about in one more second. Um, when you use negative only training, everything is a yank and a yank and a yank. Well, that builds a very weak dog because the dog is going to just break down emotionally. It's a balance. You lure the dog to show him what you want him to do. You will physically manipulate him into the position if you have to. That's shaping those behaviors, getting those to be nice and solid. Then you'll need to put corrections on. Once we know the dog knows what I want and he chooses not to do it or not to pay attention, he will receive a correction. And 90% of the time, that correction is going to be a pop on a leash. I get so many questions. What is, what is a... Uh, what is, a, what is a correction? A correction is a pop on a leash. I mean, how else are you going to correct the dog? He has a leash on. The only thing connecting you to the dog is the leash, to the collar. So you correct him with that. So um, let's see. We're all experts. That's why I'm listening to you. <laughs> Very funny. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody has their opinion on things. And, and again, like I said, I, I'm coming to you with a lot of experience in shelter dogs. And in shelter dogs, I don't have the luxury. When I'm at a shelter and I say, bring me a dog, let's look at him. I don't have the luxury to know what a lot of pet dog trainers, so if those of you who are pet dog trainers, um, will be able to say to the owner, and I've said it to my clients, what's the issue with the dog? Does the dog bite? Does the dog have reactivity issues? Does the dog have fear issues? Does have this? When a dog comes out of the shelter, he's coming out of a kennel, I know nothing about this dog. I got to figure it out from minute one, right? That's all I got. And I've worked with enough of these dogs over the last 12 years to tell you that a balanced training approach is the way to do it. Um, I don't know what's going on here with Anthony. You, got, you guys have an argument going on over here? Is there an argument? <laughs> um, anyway, so here's the thing. Let's focus on, I'm going to just pop over here. I'm going to get a couple questions. Um, no, there, there are no positive only people here. I mean, most people, you know, here's the thing. I, I had a, a challenge before. I said, anybody can meet me at any shelter when I'm doing a program and show me and challenge me for positive only training versus balanced training. And I said, you can do whatever you want and you can um, pick any dog for me. I pick any dog for you, and we meet back in an hour, a day, or you know, a few days, and see who gets further with the dog. Now, that challenge has never been taken. Right? Some guy, some yo-yo said, oh, you know, I'll, you fly me out. And, I'll, and he's got me flying him. I was probably going to ask be asked to be put in the Four Seasons uh, so he can show me his positive-only training. And I can look at the guy's channel and know there, there is no positive-only training. There is no training going on his channel. It's just a, a nutcase. So... Um, my experience has shown me over the years that positive training is a gold mine. I think it's the best thing you can do. Balanced training is a gold mine. It's the best thing you can do. Positive only training is a disaster, a complete disaster. And compulsion only training is not good either. So educate yourself. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information out there that can give you um, great feedback, right? You can, you can look on YouTube, look at different trainers. <laughs> Positive only batteries don't work yet. Yeah, they don't. That's true. Um, there's a lot of trainers on YouTube. There's, you know, there's other people besides me on there. There's a lot of good other trainers. I'm not the only good trainer on YouTube. I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm certainly trying to do my best to give you guys the best information. And I've got a unique style of teaching from having taught martial arts for a long time. I'm very direct. I do understand how to get information across, and I do understand what works, and I'm not afraid to say it. Right? A lot of trainers are going to shy away from telling you to give your dog a good heart correction. And plenty of times, I'll tell you that, that you got to have good heart correction. So, um, All right, so anyway, let's, uh, 
Let's take some questions. I'm going to look over here, see if I see any. So if you got a question, pop it up there. And then be aware that while I'm talking, I can't, um, I, I can't give you, um, I can't look at the question. So I got to ask what. Um, positively batteries don't work. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions? Looking here. By the way, if you guys have a chance, give this video a thumbs up. Those of you, I don't know how many of you are here who don't um, subscribe to this channel, but please subscribe to this channel so you're updated all the time. Andre, thank you very much. Okay, Ian Pribs, I think that says, I'm not having my glass on, Jan usually does this for me, says, your Dutch Shepherd mix one-year-old we re recently have been using e-collar and pinch collar and it's going very good, but he goes after dogs younger than him, why? Well, he hasn't been probably socialized with him. You need to socialize the dog with um, other dogs. That's going to be a huge, huge piece. Socializing is very, very important. Okay, Dexter says, my wife and I want to get our first dog puppy lab. I'm worried about meeting the dog's needs. Working nine to four Monday to Friday, I saved up 60 days of paid leave. So that's on the table. Is the schedule fair? To well, yeah, if you can give the dog 60 days, that's a lot. But you need to start conditioning the dog. You need to make sure you have... Maybe somebody you can check in on the dog during the day. It's a very good question, Dexter, by the way. It's a very considerate question. And I admire that, that you would have the consideration to think that maybe it's not right for the dog, right? So kudos to you. Kudos for saying that. Kudos for asking that question. Um, in, in, you know, usually the friends I know take off a couple weeks to, to do it, but you got to get the dog acquainted with your house. You're going to have an indoor outdoor area. You're going to have a neighbor come and check on the dog or a dog walk come and check on the dog. Those are all really, really important things to do. do you, you wouldn't, I wouldn't just leave an eight week old puppy alone from nine to four. If you can come in during lunch, check on the dog, take them out, get them relaxed and put them back. That's great. And then before you leave for work in the morning and when you get home, a lot of training, a lot of socializing, a lot of interaction with the dog. That'll really, really help. Okay, so that's a great question. Um, Jad Saad says, when dogs throw tantrums for doing something they don't want to do, is that considered bad behavior, just expression? Well, I know what you're saying, but it's something that I don't accept, but I don't also buy into it. So it's a very good question, but... Remember that if you're asking a dog to do something and they throw a tantrum, more than likely what they're trying to do is shift the behavior into play or a different interaction. Like you tell the dog stay and the dog breaks and you say no, stay. And then he starts flipping around and barking and chomping at the leash and doing all that. He's trying to do something different. He's trying to be more playful than obedient. And you're going to need to correct that. You're going to need to tell the dog no, knock it off, put him back where he is and, and force him to stay there. I mean, I know as soon as I say the word force, I'm going to have all the radicals on my, on my butt. But you need to force the dog to do that. You can't allow the dog to fail. It's as simple as that. And force can be, you know, such an overused and misunderstood word. But if I ask a dog to do something, he's going to do it, right? I'm not saying pain. I'm not saying punishment, but I'm saying make the dog do what you want the dog to do. Um, digging in the back, I've answered that question so many times, Dato. Um, you need to um, have a place where the dog can dig. Um, Adrian, uh, thank you for Dartmouth. I would like to visit the UK someday. Um, okay, so for three years, hard correction, stop my Doberman Zen picking up small dogs with harnesses. Okay, good. A Doberman is a strong dog, right? A Doberman needs a good hard correction. By the way, this whole, and I caught so much gripe on this when I talked about how my mom spanked me when I was younger. My mom, you know, was very hard on me. My mom's a very small, very frail person now, but I respected her. But yeah, she whacked me with a spoon. She whacked me with a belt. It wasn't abuse. I'd never had welts on my body. I never had that. But, you know, go to, go to Africa. Look at how lions play with each other. Look at how dogs, even our dogs play with each other very, very roughly. It's only in human society and it's only really in western society by the way you know if you look at more latino cultures or more tribal cultures uh, indigenous cultures um, african cultures kids play rough with each other it's healthy they're playing in the mud they're they're running around barefooted it's so beautiful to see if you ever ever have a chance 
go to Africa. If there's one place in the world you go, go to Africa and see not only how beautiful the animals are, but how beautiful the people are, the way they interact with, you, with each other. They're appreciative and kind and, 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 and understanding. They're the most beautiful people in the world. Anyway, enough about that. Um, try training. Yeah, try training a border collie with sheep in a positive only. Yeah, it's a very, very bad. Or a Malinois, the same way. Oh, look at Janet's here. Hi, Janet. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna just put add to a broadcast. A broadcast. See, look at there's Janet right there. <laughs> we were just talking about you. I want to know how Dwayne is doing. Can you post here how Dwayne did today? Because yesterday Dwayne got a first place, by the way. So you want to talk about good training? I think that's fantastic. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see. Look, actually, we can see Jan here. That's that's her with Jimmy. I didn't take that picture though. Um, okay, let's see. Max says, I know with dogs that you recommend getting opposite genders. Is it the same with introducing a kitten into a house? I don't do kittens. I always say that I don't do kittens. I don't know, but I wouldn't think so. I would think that you can um, uh, do whatever you want with a kitten. How to get your dog to only listen to your commands? Get your dog to listen to commands first, and then let's worry about that. Um, my pet seems very food motivated, but is not listening to any commands. He really likes fishy, smelly ones. He also keeps making a meow noise. Any advice? I hope that's a joke. So you got a cat. That's very funny. Um, yeah, Janet should be here. Janet's at a show, but I promised to do this, so that's why I got this. Um, okay, so if you want a dog to only listen to your commands, which the, here's a simple, the nutshell approach um, is you will need to correct the dog because we're talking about corrections here in balanced training. You tell the dog to sit, you have somebody else go by and, and somebody calls the dog to them. When the dog, call, when you call, the dog gets called to him, you take the call and you go, hey, no. You correct the dog, you tell him sit, have somebody else call the dog, right? You tell your dog down, you tell somebody else to sit. If the dog gets up to sit, yank, you correct the dog, no. And the dog will learn that. That's very simple, right? This is where corrections in dog training will help you. Um, let's see. All right, Jules, this looks like a good one. And again, I don't know what it is. I don't have Jan here to help me. So I'm hoping that you, uh, okay, oh, Perry, I answered the question. You can't keep asking it, just so you know, okay? Jules says, I shattered a positive only trainer once who literally couldn't enter her apartment with a reactive three-year-old dog that she has worked with since three months, all running from entrance. Yeah, that's sadly um, the way it is, right? I mean, I hate to say that, but um, if you use positive only, again, I taught karate to kids, right? I taught karate to adults too, but I spent 10 years doing that, a decade of my life doing that. And I mean, I didn't beat up anybody, but if I was punching you and you didn't block it, you might get punched. Ask Janet. Janet got punched in the face, not by me, but by Robbie Willison, right? She knew. She learned how to block. Um, all right, what else we got here? Um, I'm going to wrap it up in a couple minutes because I need a couple minutes because then I'm going to go into my live chat for members. Um, okay, what is this? Mark here, you got a question here. Like, wow, I'm way behind on these questions. Um, oh, Janet, you knocked a bar. That's okay. Um you, I'm going to start showing some of the videos of Janet doing um, some great training. Um, at what age would I start correcting a puppy? Right away, right? I lure in shape. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you, Alan. That's a great point. And Alan's a father, a really good father. You know, this is what you see, that if you talk to a child like a baby and you pander to them and, and never correct them, and I'm telling you this because... I've never raised a child. I mean, Janet's daughter, I helped raise her a little bit, but we were not living together at that time. We were together all the time. But I have structure. Like, I believe in structure. And I think that's critical. And if two people don't agree on that, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you can be together. Maybe you can't. I'm not sure. But I do believe that structure and allowing a child to fail and saying to that child or to that dog, you failed. You made a mistake. Let them realize that mistake and let them grow from that mistake. So, um, so the live chat from members, Virginia, you should have gotten an email from uh, Alan and I that says that where we are. Um, 
you need to um, go to the member section. It's going to be right on top. If you're a member of the site, by the way, if you're not, here's the shameless plug, robertcabral.com. You can go in there um, on the top of the members page, the first page you land on. My live chat will be there in five minutes. I'll be there in five minutes. So if you haven't um, X'd out of this and like this, please do so now. Uh, we had 200 and something people or something, uh, 247, only 93 thumbs up, one thumbs down. You want me to do it with the thumbs up? I'm going to break if I find out who that is. Just kidding. Um, but again, you know what? If you don't like what I say, that's, I will defend your right to disagree with me. But don't, don't, get, don't, don't get your panties in a, in, a, in, a, in a tissel or a knot or an uproar or whatever the, the, the conversation is. You know, life's too short, right? You got to just stay chill. And Rebecca, to answer your question, how do you calm an overstimulated dog on a walk? Is I stay calm. I don't, get, I don't buy into it. I don't uh, do anything crazy. I don't yell. I don't do any of that stuff. But if you are a member of my member section, robertcabral.com, you can go to the member section. The first page you go to, click on members when you get to the front of the page. And the first page you land on, I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be live in about five minutes. Um, so I'm going to start to, um, what's your question here, Mahesh? Because you're getting a little demanding here. I'm going to have to use some positive only training on you. Um, Okay, I don't see your question, Mahesh, because you got it's lost. So, um, six month old pup biting and jumping at leash, then throws himself on the ground, refuses to. So, a lot of this stuff, whatever your question is, you need to be patient. You need to go through it. You need to work through it. Every single person who has listened to me and used a balanced training approach, tell be strong enough for the dog to tell him, "Hey, knock it off." Grab him by the scruff of his neck every once in a while and tell him, hey, knock it off. And give him abundant, abundant praise, good interaction, good information. Tell him what you want. And when he does what you want, give him rewards. And when he doesn't do what you want, block him and correct him from making the same mistake over and over and over again. And then he'll make the right decision and then you can reward him. Your ideal in balanced training is to reward your dog more. The more you reward the dog, the better it is. But if the dog is making a mistake and you allow him to fail and fail and fail and fail and to try to figure out what he should be doing, you're abusing the dog. And that's what I've got a huge problem with. Do not, do not abuse your dog. Do not withhold information that you could easily give. That's the key. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to think about. And um, on that, I'm going to wrap this up and I will see you in the member section if you're a member. And if not... I hope you'll think about joining. I'll see you next week. Next live is coming up probably in a week or so. So check back. Um, on YouTube, it'll always be, um, I'll put an announcement out. And if you um, are members, you get an email. See you later.